Hello there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Dragon Blades or Sarah, however you want to call me. Um, and today I'm doing something really exciting. Um, I haven't seen any episode tutorials or new videos like this in a while. Um, and I've also noticed there's a lot of new people in the community and everybody want to write their first story and it's really exciting. So I was thinking, I'm here in this community for like six years. I think I think I have some advice to give to my new babies here. Um, but even if you're here for a while, maybe these are the things that you know or perhaps don't. Let me know in the comments. So let's get started. So tip number one, let's talk about setting up the scene uh, for when you're coding. I've seen a lot of newbies get a little bit confused about when to use the monkey A and when to use this thing. And amper, uh, am, ampersand, ampersand, amper, whatever, that thing, you know, that thing. <laughs> so the easiest way to explain it is basically this you use. This command is like an active command that is happening in a moment, you can't skip it, and this is like what's happening in the background. I'm really bad at explaining, but um, let's put it into practice. So, hold up, let me hit record on my, um, my, my computer. You know, this confuses the shit out of me. Why now I can't see? these randomizers i swear to god so here we have like a little scene going on and i just started it like this so this is the main thing that it's going on and this is the background thing that's happening and when you hit preview both are happening at the same time so basically when you're using this to set up your scene, um, what can happen is that like, when you preview it, there is a small delay before your characters and your overlays and everything just pop on the screen. Like literally 0 0.5 seconds, but it's seeable and it can be laggy as fuck. So what I do is I start my scenes like this. Like everything that I create first goes in this up, up, upper umper hand thing. Um, and everything else I create as I go. Um, so yeah. Number two, ow, number two is using sticky notes. Um, any device that you're using probably has built-in sticky notes. If it don't, it might be useful to download some. Um, so here I have mine. And basically here I have my overlay creation prompt or template and character creation template. So what I can do is basically just copy and paste things into the scene however much I need and just change name, change the layer that it's on. It just makes setting up a scene very much faster and more efficient. I used to write everything by hand and thinking back at it, I might have just been insane. <laughs> Number three, um, character placement. So as an author myself, I really love to see good character placement. If your characters are walking over tables, um, looking too large in a scene or just so unproportional, it's kind of, it gets annoying a little bit. Um, you don't have to be accurate like 100% of the time and it doesn't define your story. It doesn't necessarily mean that your story is bad or anything. Um, but more accuracy, more quality. Don't be lazy. Make those characters fit. Number four, overlay placement. Now, this is the thing that probably a lot of you know, but in case you don't, I'm just gonna say it. So, in whatever software you use for um, your custom backgrounds, if you're making them, and for example, you're cutting out something in a background where your character is like, for example, a table or something, you're just going to leave it there when you export it. You're going to export it as an overlay that is directly from your background um, and upload it to episode. 
what is this going to do is basically let you just create the overlay without needing to shift or scale it because it's going to be in a place where it's supposed to be. Um, this can come in very useful, very handy, uh, especially when you just want to get a scene over with really fast. I personally use a Procreate, but um, I've used Ibis Paint for years before I got Procreate and I actually love Ibis Paint more if you want an extra uh, app for free it is your friend <laughs> and also episode only allows like one megabyte maximum for the size of your image and if that's the case if you're um if you get that notification that you can't upload it go to compress or die.com if it's still not reduced enough let's let, let's just pretend that it is right now um, you can always access this expert mode thing and uh, just go down on this colors bar. Now, don't go too much because it will, your overlay will lose its color or background, whatever you're using. It shouldn't affect the quality at all. I haven't experienced, like, I've had some crazy compressions going on in, like, my journey here. Um, and I find that quality doesn't go down. I've seen some people actually um, cut up their overlays in like small pieces and then upload it upload it and then like create like five overlays for one overlay which is heartbreaking it's heartbreaking i'm sorry i'm sorry if you're if you've been doing this i'm sorry that the world has been gatekeeping compression of files from you like this is it's not fair not fair at all so number five is overlay rotation um, so this is one thing that I've noticed recently when I was coding something and I was like, why is my script not working right now? Like I haven't been coding for a long time and I think there are changes like that I still don't know about, but this is one of them that I found out. So when you're creating an overlay, <clears throat> you have to set its rotation and anchor point right away, right there. It will basically not change anything about the overlay except it will set its anchor point and by default um anchor point i don't think like it kind of exists so your overlay will change its shift and scale when you set the anchor point and it shall work from then if you don't use this however um it will result in like rotation like your overlay kind of popping off the screen and then coming back to the place where it's supposed to be which is kind of weird and awkward um it doesn't work <laughs> for some reason I have never experienced this problem until recently and it hasn't been a thing before. I have made a lot of overlay rotations like up until like episode 9 when I discovered this. It was kind of confusing to me because my old scripts still work, everything is fine. But just so you know, if you haven't coded in a while, th th this is what is happening right now. Number 6 is mood overlays. Mood overlays. So, um, I really love to see mood overlays. And naturally, the characters um, in the story, like episode characters, are kind of like really vibrant and they can pop off the background. So here you can see that this dude is basically kind of popping off. They don't really look like they're in the dark or whatever. But when you do apply, my overlay is here you can create really good visuals scenarios now now this sucks this is a wrong choice hold up <laughs> um this can really help you create beautiful radiance gradients and just your characters fitting better um into the scenes so yeah i love to see them they're not necessary but i love to see them Number seven, I'm just going to quickly tell you about these. And if you don't already know, probably a lot of you know, but if you don't know, these are basically the kind of overlays that stick to the preview, stick to the screen. And like when you're moving your camera around, they just, they stay in one place. They're used the same way as regular overlays. You just don't write overlay, you write UI. Very useful for text effects, location, time stamps, titles, anything really. But one thing about them is that like they're on a top layer of everything in your preview. So you can really not top it off with anything else 
it's just going to be on top <laughs> of everything. Number eight is text effects. I always love to see text effects, honestly. Um, they're really accessible and they kind of give this unique vibe to the story. I admit, I go overboard with it, okay? Don't be crazy like me. It's very time consuming, sometimes even a little bit overwhelming, especially when you finish a scene and you're like, ah, oh, now I have to add all these flipping text overlays and I, I just, I get into it too much and I, I go way too much. But I really love to see like, for example, uh, italic or bold. I think it just looks cool and it adds depth to the dialogue and what's being said. So number nine is actually about your browser. Which browser do you use? Um, I'm guessing probably a default one that you have, either like Microsoft Edge or um, Safari or Chrome. But let's be real, my computer is running close to heaven right now. So <laughs> I really needed something that can run smoothly. And I find that Opera browser is actually quite good for this kind of coding and this kind of thing. Preview, really smooth. Your end, your script is automatically on dark mode. So your eyes don't blink out when you're staring at the screen so much. Um, aside from that, you have some cool features such as, I think you can press the, I don't remember what it is. Uh, your tabs load for a while. Um, if you're out, out of them for way too long, you can switch between tabs without the delay and like access the tab right away, which is really cool. And last but not least, have a sheet with you and write down all of your characters and their personalities. Every character in your story has their own personality and sometimes can be hard. When you're creating dialogue, it can really help you stay true to who your characters are. And of course, the way that they are affects their speech. This comes in really handy when you're not sure how you want your character to exp express itself, but to stay true to who they really are, as I said. Um, so for example, here I have Zoe, soft, loving, curious, intuitive, self-conscious, trusting, fiery, like you don't have to go overboard with it. Just something where you can like, whenever you're not sure how to go about what you want your character to say, just like read these and kind of try to resonate with it. Um, it really does help um, stay true to your characters and honor their unique personalities. And also height. Um, this is what I did recently and it really helps. Like I wrote my character's height um so when i'm coding them and it, especially if you have a lot of characters like me like you forget how like you forget how they are so um it's really easy to like just look at a paper and see okay okay proportions don't need to be perfect 100 percent of the time but it's nice to have a little guide that can help you remind you how your characters exist in the world that you've created so this is basically all i have for you Please tell me in the comments, um, was it useful? Do you want to see more videos like this? I love feedback. Um, and also make sure to check out my story. It's really cool and I just work really hard on it. it um, it's my heart, it's my soul. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>